Welcome to the Beat Reporters Inbox on MLB.com. I'm presented by Edward Jones. I'm Steve Gilbert, MLB.com D-backs reporter with Joe Cortez asking the questions. Joe, what do we have first? First question from Alex. Who will stay in the rotation, Randall Delgado or Zach Godley? Uh, that's a great question, Alex. Uh, you know, and if you had asked me that a few days ago, I would have said Randall Delgado for sure. That's the way Tori Lovello made it sound when we talked to him uh, just after Randall's start the other night. Uh, Zach Godley, though, continues to pitch very well, and it's it's hard to imagine them sending him down with as, as well as he's pitched right now. So if I had to guess right now, and it's strictly a guess because they haven't made a decision yet, I would say that, uh, that they keep Zach Godley in the rotation um, and shift Randall Delgado to the bullpen. That way they keep both of those guys in the big leagues, and uh, Randall has pitched in the bullpen the last few years and has a lot of experience doing that. Next question from Dave. Who could, who could D-backs be interested in at the trade deadline? Well, Dave, I think that when you look at what's uh, coming up for the Diamondbacks trade deadline-wise, they don't have a ton to trade. They don't, don't want to. They're in the process right now of rebuilding that farm system, um, and today's draft is going to be a big part of that. So I think one of the things that they don't want to do is give away too much of their young, the young players that they do have in the system that they like a lot. But I do think that if they still are in contention come the trade deadline, which it sure seems like at this point they will be, um, that they would look to add a piece in the bullpen. Uh, I think their rotation seems pretty solid right now, uh, near the top of the National League. Uh, they've got some depth, as we just talked about. They're trying to figure out who to send to the bullpen, which means they do have some extra starters there to play with and some depth, um, even with the injury to, to Shelby Miller and Taiwan Walker being on a DL. So for me right now, and the offense, again, has been, has been outstanding for them. For me, I would say that if they do add something before the trade deadline, it would be a piece, uh, piece or two for the bullpen. Next what else, question. Joe? Next question from Matt. If the postseason started right now, what would the rotation look like in the NLDS? Wow, Matt. I would, I would imagine that, you know, and this could change uh, given what the matchup might be, who they might be playing, uh, whether it's a left-handed dominant team or right-handed dominant team. But I would imagine that, that Zach Greinke would start game one. Uh, Rob, Robbie Ray, uh, who has pitched like an ace his last five times out, uh, would probably start game number two. And then it becomes interesting what you would do with the three, four spots in the rotation, um, you know, depend on really who starts to pick it up and, and pitch really well at that point, whether uh, Taiwan Walker comes back and is, is over his blister issues and, and pitches very well. He's certainly a candidate there. Um, Patrick Corbin, the way he pitched his first few starts of the year, would be a candidate. And, of course, whatever they do with that, that final spot in the rotation, whether it's Zach Godley or not. But I think that the, your one-two would probably be, uh, be Granke and Robbie Ray. Next one from Cassie. Paul Goldschmidt has 14 home runs and 13 stolen bases. Do you predict he'll get his first 30-30 season? I think there's a really good chance for Paul Goldschmidt to do that. He seems like uh, offensively, you know, that's that's kind of a, a no-brainer for him. He's, he's putting up another uh, outstanding season offensively. So um, whether or not he gets to 30 homers, we'll see. But I, I, I think the way he steals bases, the way he studies pitchers, uh, Dave McKay, their first base coach, deserves a huge amount of credit uh, for this team and the way they run the bases. Dave studies the tendencies of the pitchers closer than probably anybody in baseball. He picks up the smallest things, um, and that really helps guys like Paul Goldschmidt, who don't have overwhelming speed. You look at uh, as a first baseman, he doesn't have great speed, but he, he knows how to get jumps. And, and part of that is his work with Dave. Uh, part of it just is his instincts and the way he runs the bases. So I think he has a very good chance of, of uh, getting to that 30-30 plateau this year. Next question from Kimmy. Who has the most who has been the most pleasant surprise in the D-backs lineup? Uh, the most pleasant surprise. Um, it's tough to say because they, they've, they've done so well up and down that lineup. But... Um, if, if I had to pick somebody right now, uh, you know, Jake Lamb, you thought he was going to have a good year, but he's having an amazing year at the plate right now, uh, leading the National League in RBIs, uh, the way he's hitting the ball. You know, so, again, I, it was not a surprise that he's doing well, uh, but to be doing as well as he is and to be at the top of the National League or near the top in RBIs, um, for me, that he's the guy that, that's probably uh, been the biggest surprise as far as that goes. This one from Victor. What is the status of A.J. Pollock? Well, I tell you, if you ask A.J., he's ready to come back now. He's, he's really talked to him the other day, and, and he's really chomping at the bit to get back in there. 
and play. He ran it at close to, if not 100%, the other day for the first time. Um, so it's possible we could see him back before the end of this, uh, this road trip, this long road trip that goes to Detroit, Philadelphia, and Denver. Uh, and if not, if things keep progressing, certainly it would seem like on uh, right, right close to when they get back from this road trip, um, they could see A.J. Pollock get back. But they're being extra cautious because, you know, anytime you're dealing with, with something like a groin strain or a hamstring, um, you want to be very careful because you don't want the player to re-injure it and, and have it be something more serious and keep him out for even longer period of time. Next question from Noah. Any chance former prospect Christian Walker could be in the majors this year? Uh, possible. Not not sure about that. Depends on kind of how this uh, this all shakes out for them. Um, so I would I would say for me that's a that's a possible, but uh, uh, I, I don't exactly uh, have a great answer for you on that one. Next one from Brooks. Who is the D, who is the biggest competition for the D-backs right now? Well, I think you know the Rockies and the Dodgers right there. Um, you know, you you this when Colorado got off to a good start, I think some people were maybe a little skeptical of them, but they continue to play very good baseball and have really put some distance uh, between themselves and and the rest of the guys. I think the the Dodgers are going to be tough. They're always tough. They've got the resources if they need to go out at the trade deadline and add a piece or two. They're playing very well. Um, so right now, I, I, those two teams, along with the Diamondbacks there in the National League West, seem like playoff teams right now. So I think the biggest question for me then would be, who else would be who else would challenge the Diamondbacks in, in a wild card race? You know, you look at the National League East, there doesn't seem to be a team that's going to step up and, and be a wild card team this year, um, unless the Mets are somehow able to put things together. Uh, you look at the, the National League Central, uh, the Brewers and the Cubs are neck and neck, but, but the Diamondbacks have a better record than both of those teams, possibly the Cardinals, if the Cardinals were to kind of get, get hot and put it together. So I think the Diamondbacks right now uh, are in a pretty good position if they continue to play as well as they have, uh, and I think their competition they should be keeping an eye on maybe the wild card standings as well. From Mark, what do you think about Chris Herman? You know, Chris, I, I think a number of times he has uh, hit the ball hard this last homestand and, and had very little to show for it. He's a versatile player. I, I like him on a National League roster because he can catch, he can play the outfield, he can play the corners in the infield. Um, he has pop in his bat off the bench. Um, he's a guy that, that it's, it's hard for him because he doesn't get a lot of playing time behind the plate. Math is the primary catcher. Ionetta has been almost splitting time with Jeff behind the plate. So it's been hard for them to get consistent at bats to, to Chris Herman. I think he's somebody, again, this homestand, you start to see the bat come alive a little bit more. Had some uh, hard hit outs, didn't have anything to show for it. But I, I do, I really like him as a player, particularly in the National League, as a guy to keep as a third catcher because of that versatility. From James. Are we, are we looking at the real Fernando Rodney the past few weeks, or do you expect him to regress as the year goes on? You know, Fernando right now he seems to have a good mix of that fastball and devastating changeup that he has. And I think earlier this year uh, they felt like his pitch mix was not, uh, was not ideal, and that's what was causing him struggles. And I think that once they figured out exactly, you know, how often he was supposed to throw that fastball, how much that would benefit him, um, I think you're seeing him kind of settle into to a pretty good groove right now. Can he maintain it the rest of the year? Uh, it certainly seems like right now uh, he's kind of putting it all together and, and kind of overcome that rough spot that he had uh, earlier in May. From Carl, who do you see representing the Diamondbacks in the All-Star game? Well, that's one of the things Tori Lovello was talking about the other day. He said that Diamondback fans need to get, uh, get busy voting because none of the Diamondback players right now would start in that All-Star game. But I think if you're looking at guys who could be named to the team, certainly a guy like Paul Goldschmidt uh, is having a year that would be worthy of that. Uh, we talked about Jake Lamb earlier, um, up near the top of the league in RBIs. I think he certainly should, should be one of the guys to go. Um, Robbie Ray, uh, probably the hottest pitcher right now in baseball, is another guy that could go. Uh, and if, if they, if they you know, continue to play very well, maybe they get four guys on, and if Zach Greinke keeps pitching the way he has, um, he could be a guy too, so that would be four. That would be a lot from one team, uh, but if the Diamondbacks continue to play well, uh, it certainly seems like at least three of those four guys uh, would certainly uh, earn a spot there. From Saul, should Jake Lamb be in the home run derby? <laughs> uh, I, I'd like to see that. I think that would be, would be interesting. I don't know uh, how his swing would translate. 
but I, I certainly think that uh, that he would be good at that. You know, they've been trying to get Paul Goldschmidt to do it when he actually uh, when he when he's been in these All Star games the last few years, and he just doesn't feel comfortable doing it. Doesn't feel like he hits many uh, home runs even during batting practice. It's not the way his swing is. So Jake probably has more of a pure power swing than, than Paul Goldschmidt does. Um, and it would be interesting to see if, if Jake was in the uh, home run derby, how he would do. From Mark, what's the key to getting the D-backs to play on the road the same way they play at home? It's a great question, Mark. And I, what's funny to me is that last year they were so bad at home that the big question was how can they play better at home. And sometimes it's just a, a quirk in the way things work out. Um, they didn't play very well that first road trip. They had some tough ballparks to play in for their hitters. It was mainly their offense that kind of struggled. Um, so I think this road trip is going to be big for them. Uh, Detroit's not overly hitter, hitter friendly, but they go to Philadelphia, uh, a pitching staff that struggled this year in a ballpark that uh, the ball flies out of Philly. So uh, maybe that will help get their bats going on the road. And then they finish it up in, in Coors Field, which you know we all know uh, can be a very hitter friendly park. So. Uh, I, I don't know that there's one specific thing. They've, they've tried some different things, um, whether it's you know starting batting practice earlier or later, um, altering their routine a little bit on the road. Uh, but so far, it, it's such a small sample size. I know it's almost half the season, but the baseball season's so long, and it, it's one of those things where I don't think there's an easy explanation, certainly not one that they've found just yet. From Chris, when will the D-backs start hitting away from home? Yeah, again, I, I think this, this road trip will really help them if they can start getting going uh, in Philadelphia especially and then uh, carry some of that momentum with them over in the Coors Field, uh, I think that would really help them out a lot. Uh, other than that, they play, remember, they play a lot of games in NL West parks, um, which are not friendly to, to hitters, whether that's San Diego, San Francisco, and even L.A. at night, where the ball just simply doesn't carry quite as well. So uh, I really appreciate everybody's questions. Thanks for watching the, the Beat Reporters Inbox uh, on MLB.com, presented by Edward Jones. Uh, please tune in next time.